Okay, someone on Facebook had asked me how I managed to get the four-way decoupler, the stock quad adapter, to fit like this on the bottom of the rocket. Now, the only mod I have installed on this computer is Kerbal Engineer uh, Redo, Redux, however the heck you say that. French words, blah. So what it is, is I have the four-way coupler up here, and I got four parts down here that I need to connect. So if you leave your um, symmetry node on four, you will get a mess like that. I mean, which I guess is cool if you want to gin up four two and a half meter tank sections, but that's not what we want to do. We want just one. So we're going to shift X down to one. And like that. Now, really, this is only connected on one part, and that wasn't it. So let's illustrate that with just the one part. So I got the one part here, right? And you flip this over, and bam, it's just like that. So essentially, the coupler is only attached to one decoupler at a time. Now, I'm going to show you what happens if you attempt to put this thing onto the launch pad. You're going to see what's going to happen because it's only attached at one point, one corner. So it should lean over to the opposite corner, right? Let's see if I'm right. In physics, yeah, see it's leaning over one way. Yeah, it looks like it's attached at this guy, but not these guys. So that's that. So how can you make a rocket actually using this little trick? Well, that's not very hard, actually. I'll just use struts. Well, what we use specifically is these cubic octagonal struts. And then we use the strut connectors. And I'll go up here. And it doesn't look quite right. Let me fix that. That's better. I'll look with it. Let's see, there now. See, now if I launch this, it shouldn't wobble around at all. I've effectively braced the rocket up on itself. I've made a little skeleton for it. Wait for physics to kick in. Yep, and didn't go anywhere. So there you go. That's how you create, I don't know, it's kind of aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Except the tank down there is all wild fun around. Yeah, that's fun. The tank is all wobbly. There we go. So yeah, that's that. That's um, that's how you do that. You can do this the the five, the three-way coupler, or the two-way. Uh, the problem you'll find I'll just get this down here. All right, let's change out those engines for nervous LVMs. LVNs pose a interesting challenge, which is why I don't use LVNs like this.
symmetry. Bam. And I discovered this out after attempting this later. I was like, oh wow, that didn't work much at all. So let's get us something to boost this up into atmosphere with. So what I wanted to do is have four LVN engines in the back of the spacecraft, a nice compact little package. Instead of having them out radially mounted to the spacecraft like I typically did, I said, hey, I'll make them inline. That's much better cooler, right? So we'll just proceed to launch. We're not going to go to space with this at all, period. But we'll just ride this up here and see what happens. So if anyone's familiar with LVN engines, they know that the LVN casing is split in two halves in a clamshell type setup surrounding the engine. And they'll know exactly what's going to happen the next couple of seconds. Yeah, that. The clamshells blow themselves apart and break everything. Well, that's not going to get us to space. Or if you have this thing already in space, you're going to have a crippled spacecraft and with off-axis thrust and everything, and it's not cool. So what I've been forced to do, if I have a setup like this, I'll just put that down there. I'll do something different. The two-way coupler node, the bi adapter, is safe to use. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why as soon as I get it set up. Alright, so there's my LVNs. Here are my decouplers. Okay, I can tell by looking at it that the clamshells are going to blow themselves off into each other. So, the other rotation. There. Now the clamshells should blow themselves away from the spacecraft, but not into each other. Make sense? And now I need only one of these. Sure, why not? We'll keep that strut mess there. This should actually work. Although it looks kind of funny from the side. It's like, oh look, it's only a one, a one and a quarter meter rocket. Nope, it's not. It's bigger than that. And away we go. That looks all sorts of weird. Accelerating a lot better because it weighs a lot less now. I've already really exceeded the 100 meters per second below 2,000 meter rule. Because I'm using a flipping mainsail to do this and it's really kind of overkill. It may be possible to actually get this thing into space. I'd have to do an LVN burn to get there, but it might actually, in theory, work. Okay. Same. Perfect. So that's that. That's how I got around using LVNs in the back of the spacecraft, and using more than one. It's typically what I end up having to do is put the LVNs on little nacelles on the back end of it, and that was that. The other thing I ended up doing after a while was leaving all this exposed on the bottom of the spacecraft and having asparagus staging above it and extending downwards, like, I don't know, just.
have something crazy like like this. And sure. So I have my asparagus staging extend beneath. I mean, this is totally not how I would do it, really. I don't use orange tanks much anymore for anything because they kind of suck, but um, I would have that as a setup, more or less. This just kind of illustrates the concept. I'm not actually, I can't actually launch this stupid thing. So that's how I use the quad try and buy adapters in line in sequence with other things. So thanks for watching.